Well, in the aftermath of a weather emergency, what do you do when you need to communicate with the public and you have no internet access or cell phone network? And we've been there a million times, haven't we, Steph? It may be old tech, but amateur radio, also known as ham radio, can be a lifesaver when disaster strikes, it and it's an active community of enthusiasts. Enthusiasts, trust me, uh, I know one of them really well. Joining us now uh, to talk more about this is Bob Indermitzen. Uh, he is with the Amateur Radio Relay League. Uh, good morning, Bob. Thanks for talking to us. I think I'm speaking on all of our behalfs. We we cannot thank you guys enough for yeah. the hard work that you do often when communication yeah. is down. Let's talk about that, all right? What does ham radio offer when electronic communication doesn't? Sure, so we rely significantly on both power and communications to communicate with each other, to keep connected. And the amateur radio community has developed a personal communications capability. Uh, members of our, of our trained amateur radio emergency service can use batteries, portable radios, put an antenna up rather quickly, and make communications when all else fails. So tell us why this is so important during things like, especially hurricane season, um, and what role that you guys actually play when a hurricane is making landfall. So we have a rather vast network of volunteer radio amateurs all across the United States, but also all across the world. And our network includes about 71 geographic sections in the United States. Our volunteers train in the amateur radio emergency service. They're well trained, they're prepared for readiness. Uh, response comes every once in a while, but uh, they're always ready. They're well embedded with their communities. A local emergency operations center would most likely know who the radio amateurs are in their community. Yeah, you got to get trained on this. This isn't oh, yeah. just something they give you. You know, you, you get a certificate for this. Uh, Bob, so do you, let, let's just say we got a landfalling hurricane. Do you embed with the weather service? I mean, how do you guys aid the weather yeah, service get the in getting the communication mm -hmm. out? Yeah, there's two very strong volunteer groups of, of ham radio operators. Uh, one, one is a station that's actually at the uh, National Hurricane Center in Miami, and the other one is the Hurricane Watch Net. These radio amateurs are always prepared to activate their net, their communications network. They're all across South America, the United States, the Caribbean, and they, they focus both on um, communications that they pick up from people who are doing ground reports, what are ham radio operators seeing in their areas. Uh, but when an actual hurricane happens, they may actually turn into a, a, a lifeline to get health and welfare messages back to communities mm -hmm. where people are worried about their family members. Now, it's not ham radio, but I remember my dad telling a story. He grew up in Chicago, and he would see when he was a kid how far of a radio station he could get in Chicago. And depending on the weather, I think he got all the right. way to the West Coast once he got a radio station. I can't remember. So, wow. you know, this is old technology that a lot of people, you know, participated in. Would you say it is still growing or is it kind of taking a turn down a little bit? Yeah, in the United States, we have more radio amateurs than ever who are licensed. So it's, uh, it's a relatively straight path to get your ham radio license. It's a federally licensed radio service, uh, and people study for their ham radio license using um, uh, materials from local radio clubs, but also materials that our organization produces. They study for their tests, they get their license, and they get on the air. Radio propagation hasn't gone away. It's a phenomenon. And so the ability to pick up that weak signal from far across the world mm -hmm. or from Chicago uh, yeah. on a particular radio frequency is something that has always existed, and we harness that. Ham radio operators, uh, we cannot thank you enough for being cool part stuff. of the weather enterprise. Bob Inderbitson, uh, appreciate your time this morning for talking to us.